uh, certainly um, with respect to your first comment on the format of the meeting, we take your point, this is actually a format which we used to have and we change from time to time to see what works best. But sometimes you have to go back to what you used to do and I think that uh, it's, a, it's a valid point that uh, participants who are here by themselves need to hear more about what has happened in, in, in the breakout session. So this is, this is certainly something that we would put on our agenda for uh, the next WEDEF. I also um, was happy to hear the complementarity between uh, both of your presentations and your takeaways because clearly the issues that you have focused on uh, are, are critical to uh, our success in, in trying to reach out to governments and SMEs in, in the developing world. So I'd like to really thank you both for your insights into uh, what you have heard over the last couple of days and I'd like to make a couple of uh, points myself. Um, I think that, that uh, a, what we have heard, what we have actually heard over the last couple of days is that uh, the only way to increase inter ASEAN trade, and I talk about ASEAN because these are our hosts today, is actually through the integration of SMEs into regional trade, which would require an improvement in the business environment through more harmonized rules and standards, improved logistics and connectivity. And I think this point actually underscores precisely what has been said by both ambassadors here, that indeed we need to look at what is it that's going to uh, oil the, uh, the, the way that we can, can actually see more trade moving between countries and it's only going to be if we can simplify, harmonize and have mutual recognition processes in place. And I think that although uh, trade between ASEAN countries represents the bulk of intra-regional trade worldwide, ASEAN policymakers and business leaders are actually and actively looking to expand trade beyond the region, especially to Latin America and increasingly to Africa. I think we also heard about a new interpretation of what is happening in trade, and it is that countries are trading not in goods but tasks. This is, the, this is a new phenomena that I heard uh, coming out of, of this meeting. And this is only possible if we can move items across borders quickly and efficiently. Thanks to the new model, there is a higher chance for SMEs to join global supply chains. While they may not be able to export directly, they can feed into global supply chains of larger companies. While the notion of value chains is obviously not new, there is a fundamental shift in value chains in light of changing consumer behavior, and preferences as the middle class balloons in emerging markets. The new demand for higher value added products creates opportunities for even small nations to gain market access and benefits, as we heard yesterday from Minister Grosser talking about some of the examples from, uh, from New Zealand and also Minister Mary Pengisto who was talking about the creative industries. So this need to look for niche markets, I think, provides a great opportunity. Trade is necessary, though obviously not sufficient condition for food security. It is indispensable in terms of accessibility and affordability of food, and that point was made very, very clear by Valentin Rugavitsa from the WTO. Yesterday was World Food Day, which reminded us that more obstacles to trade there are the more difficult it is, it is to, f to make affordable food available to all. ITC has focused its work on bringing transparency to non-tariff measures as a first step towards policy change. We learned that more than half of NTMs are actually imposed by the exporting countries themselves. 
Even while the private sector is pressing for policy change, companies can mitigate their effect of NTM by capacity building of their staff and following ex existing rules more closely. Technology innovation and in infrastructure services are important drivers for economic and social development. In Kenya, for instance, new mobile applications allow micro-entrepreneurs for the informal sector to carry out financial transactions even without a bank account. And ITC uses this facility in our ethical fashion program where we have 7,000 people working across uh, very poor communities in, in, in uh, Kenya, and we use uh, the telephone system to actually transfer money to uh, these 7,000 people who are involved and engaged in our ethical fashion program. But last but not least, we heard and learned a lot about the Indonesian experience, their gradual diversification from exports of commodities toward value-added products, the importance of connectivity and the use of public-private pr partnership in infrastructure projects. All of us will leave the conference with new knowledge of what works, insights and actionable ideas and meaningful relationships that we can leverage in order to achieve our goals and achieve impact. Now the question is, are we actually going to act on it? Reality catches up with us very quickly we are busy and, in, and, of course, change in what we normally do is a difficult process. I encourage all of us to make the time in our busy schedules to follow up on some of the most promising ideas we heard here, to continue the conversations in person or virtually, and to carry out some of the meaningful projects and initiatives that were discussed here today. I was very happy to hear from uh, the head of Exim Bank Indonesia that in fact uh, he is going to be meeting with uh, some, some uh, business people from Mozambique and based on our panel today, he has invited a number of the speakers to remain behind to be part of that conversation to see how that follows up and how we are able to see Africa Indonesia coming closer together. So this is one, one quick example of a panel that has led to some action. But I will, we are, ITC has created a group on LinkedIn for conference participants. And I encourage you to use the WEDEF 2012 hashtag in your tweets. After the virtual conversations, we hope to reconnect with you again uh, in person during the next year, and of course, we would certainly like to see you at WEDEF 2013. The theme next year for next year's event will be export-led employment generation through the integration of SMEs into supply chains. SMEs represent the most labor-intensive part of most economies, so connecting them to global supply chains is the linchpin to export-led job creation. We are in the process of identifying the most suitable partner in terms of a host country. But of course, we would like to receive your interest in seeing if you would like to host WEDEF in the next coming weeks. I hope that next year's WEDEF will take place in a more upbeat economic environment. Just yesterday, the New York Times reported that Chinese manufacturers were already more optimistic seeing higher than expected sales domestically, as well as in the US and emerging markets. And The Economist, I would say the archetype for free market magazines, if there ever was one, this week ran a 20-page special report on inclusive growth. Times certainly have changed. Uh, before handing over to Minister Hadiat to close the event, I would like to thank one, once again all of you for having attended this conference, and especially those of you who have stayed behind for this final closing. I know that many of you are leaving shortly. Our sponsors I'd like to thank very much because they have made uh, many of the wonderful facilities that we have been able to enjoy 
uh, possible. And I certainly would like to thank the government of Indonesia who have gone way beyond uh, what they uh, were expected to do in order to deliver a wonderful conference for us. To the ASEAN Competition Institute who have also facilitated our, our work here in Indonesia and especially to my very tiny team in, in, in Geneva who have gone out of their way to actually uh, do most of the work in making sure that you are here, working with our speakers, etc. And of course, uh, those who are outside of my communications team who have volunteered to work with various panelists. Uh, I'd like to, to, um, to really thank the Ministry of Trade and Minister Gita and his team and uh, if you would join me, uh, Vice Minister, on the stage, I would like to just hand over a small token of our appreciation to the ministry for what has been, uh, I think, a great partnership. And we just want to give you something for Minister Gita so she, he can have something in his office to represent uh, our partnership. Thank you.